In a desert, a man stood alone in a sandy field. In front of him stood a giant scorpion creature with red eyes and too many teeth. The ugly beast lunged at the man with malicious intent. However, the man seemed completely unthreatened. He leaped over its tail and ran, slashing at it with his sword along the way. As he struck down the monster known as the Scorpion King, our main character, Kang Hyun Wu, emerged victorious. Immediately after, we see Hyun Wu walking away from the battle. He had achieved a great victory. He was extremely bored and wondered who he would hunt next. At this moment, Hyun Wu found himself in a world that was a game, known as the Arena. He was the number one ranked player in this game, and he used the name Meligod. He had countless records. However, today he decided that he would quit and focus on the real world. Instead, his friend Young Chan was astonished when he permanently retired from the game. How dare he? His friend stopped being a bookworm and truly embraced life. Hyun Wu calmly explained that he couldn't just play games forever. Young Chan wouldn't stop bothering him. Despite saying that he could at least sell all his items for cash, instead of just deleting all the items he had acquired while playing the arena game. Because that was never a way to make money for Hyun Woo. But for Kang Hyun Woo, it was just something he did for fun. He wouldn't regret deleting his account. Even though it would only waste thousands of dollars like an idiot, he waved to Young Chan. It was time for him to serve in the military temporarily and then inherit his father's construction business. By the time he got out, two years had passed, and things didn't go as planned. Hyun Wu was working at a grocery store with an income of only about $9 per hour. Who would have thought that the heir to a wealthy construction company could fall so low? During his last two years of military service, Hyun Wu never thought that his family would go bankrupt. He thought it was a dream, but in reality, his father's construction company went completely bankrupt because his father fell seriously ill and his family was shattered by a huge debt. The medical bills were no joke. Kang Hyun Woo spent most of his money to help and support his struggling family. Hyun Woo was forced to eat expired store food just to survive. He wondered how much longer he would have to endure living like this. Looking down at his phone, he received the message again from his old friend Young Chan, whom he had been avoiding for the past few years. Hyun Woo was too embarrassed and uncomfortable to even reply to his message. Despite not getting a response, Young Chan still regularly sent messages to Hyun Woo to check on him. He was a true friend. In the message, Young Chan also asked Hyun Woo if he would consider returning to the arena. And our protagonist thought that it wasn't a bad idea. The arena was profitable. Lately, streamers and pro players easily made a lot of money. And Hyun Woo was the number one player in the past. And if he could get back to it, then he might really be able to stack up some cash. It was a good idea. He even started itching his fingers for some reason. His eyes lit up with hope as he quickly went to the mall to buy the game console he needed to play known as the Arena Cube. His facial expression changed when he realized it cost three times his current monthly salary. Oh well, his father's medical bills could wait, because now it was time to play. As he looked at the console, he was approached by a blonde man and a girl. Hyun Woo was unaware of who this man was until he reminded him. His name was Hanbek. Could he be the son of his father's longtime business partner? Hyun Woo's father lay in bed and his family was doing something very wrong. However, his old business partner seemed to be doing just fine for himself. He strolled through the mall passing by Hyun Woo with that girl. As he passed by, he made snide comments about our protagonist's financial situation. Hyun Woo retorted by asking how this kid knew anything about his family's money issues. With a wicked look on his face, Hanbek stated that everything that had happened to Hyun Woo's family was all his father's doing. Both of their fathers were business partners, and Hanbek's father stabbed Hyun Woo's father from behind after working together for decades. The little punk dug the knife in deeper telling Hyun Woo that he had to go and take care of his father as he lay on his deathbed. Because he might not have much time left, he was in shock. And security rushed to restrain Hyun Woo as he screamed in anger. The reason his father was lying in bed and the reason his life was in chaos was all the work of Hanbek's family. He gasped for air. He said he would kill Hanbek, no matter what. However, it was this action that got him arrested. He did not leave the police station until late at night. 
The rain falling to the ground is an accurate metaphor for his current feelings. Not only Hyun Wu and his family were betrayed, but the criminal had the audacity to boast about it. Driven by anger and hatred, he swore to himself that he would seek revenge. That feeling quickly turned into sadness and despair. Even without money, he was too powerless now to think about something like revenge. A news production caught his attention, discussing an arena player who earns $500,000, and how the game has an incredible impact on the economy. Hyun Woo was truly desperate, and this could be his only chance for a good life. Finally, he dared to call his old friend. Young Chan answered almost instantly, like a true brother. After the young man asked why he was calling, Hyun Wu expressed his need for assistance. After years, he finally returned to the arena. He aspires to reclaim his title as the number one player. Chaos erupted in the arena headquarters when they discovered someone had registered with old user information. Melee God. An employee communicated with an AI in the game known as the Owl and inquired about how this new player was performing. Al the game character responsible for guiding players through the arena tutorial, observed Hyun Wu. Astonished by his new record in the power application test, Hyun Wu stood with clenched fists, demanding to be taken to the next test. He was not here to be underestimated. If the arena was the only way for him to change his situation, so be it. Hyun Wu would become a ranker once again. The only reason he could play in the arena was thanks to his good friend, who allowed him to use the cube arena because Hyun Wu couldn't afford to buy it himself. He was very grateful and thankful to his friend for helping him. He would definitely repay him later. Tutorial swung his weapon, anticipating that he had decided to give Hyun Wu a level 10 test according to his registration. Hyun Wu took a deep breath, preparing himself because it had been a long time since he fought in the arena. His opponent stood in front of him. It was a level 10 dark elf warrior who stood holding two weapons while Hyun Wu was only ranked one, so he had to fight. In this fight, Hyun Wu seemed quite calm about things. Although he closed his eyes and took a deep breath, the Dark Elf took this opportunity to attack him, thinking it was a mistake for him to close his eyes. The Elf clearly didn't know he was dealing with the famous melee god. Hyun Wu blocked the attack as if on autopilot, and the duel began. The reason Hyun Wu was able to reach first place before was because no one could match his level of control when fighting against fairies. Out of desperation for his parents, his sick father and his mother who constantly stayed by his side, he finally felt a strong desire for revenge against Hanbeck. He himself would become a top-ranked arena player with a speed that no one could even imagine. The employees at the arena headquarters who had been watching him jumped in surprise because a newly created level 1 character was able to defeat a level 10 dark elf warrior. This confirmed his belief that Malay God had truly returned. I congratulate our protagonist. The tutorial ends here, and now he can enter the actual game. The village chief from a place called Aslan gave him an item as a reward for completing the tutorial. He gave Hyun Wu a ring containing the spirit of a giant that enhanced his power. As the ring shimmered on his finger, his smile was as bright as ever. He had successfully obtained a unique item at such an early stage. He truly started off on a good note. Hyun Wu received an in-game message from Yang Chan, who offered to take him to some high-ranking underground rooms to speed up his leveling. Hyun Wu declined his offer for now because there was a special item he wanted to make. Yang Chan smiled to himself first. Then he wondered what it could be. But on this earth, his friend might be planning to do this. At the beginning of the game in the past, there was an item used by all hardcore arena players called Exp Potion. It was a famous item that increased Exp gain by 20% for 4 hours. This item was very valuable and sold for 3,000 gold pieces each. But one day, the supplier disappeared, and the item eventually faded from people's memories. This was because the supplier was Hyun Wu. He was the only one who knew how to make the Exp Potion. So, if he were to sell it at an auction, he could name any price he wanted. He is currently trying to gather the ingredients to make one of these potions. However, Hyun Wu is struggling with the last ingredient. He is debating whether he should go to the underground prison to get it or not. When he tries to enter the dungeon, he is stopped by a purple-haired man who is a member of the Black Skull Alliance. 
he says that this underground prison belongs to his alliance. So, Hyun Wu cannot enter this place. This is the only place where Hyun Wu can get the ingredient he needs. So, he pushes past the determined man to go and take the item he needs. However, the purple-haired man seems to draw his sword and raise it to Hyun Wu's neck. He calls him a novice, even telling him to leave this dungeon. However, because his entire life depended on this game and he did not want to waste a single second, he decided to make a bet with the man. Both of them would fight, and whoever lost had to delete all of their characters and start over. The man was astonished at how the new player could be so arrogant and confident. He accepted the challenge, thinking it would be an easy fight. Hyun Woo told the man to say goodbye to his character. As he took out his sword from his inventory, it didn't take long for the duel to begin. The two players attacked each other with swords in their hands. Our protagonist appeared very calm. As he looked at the man's face, he wondered where a noob could acquire such agility and speed. Hyun Woo easily blocked his attacks, making him question his own level. The man must be much higher than him. The purple-haired man began to think that he might have a unique item. He seemed too relaxed earlier to be a beginner. He finally managed to attack him, but Hyun Wu stood there unaffected by the blow that hit his shoulder. When Hyun Wu was hit, the young man with purple hair seemed to think that it didn't affect him. Hyun Wu must have blocked the pain to not feel such an attack. This fight was easier than Hyun Wu expected, and he swung his weapon at the purple-haired man, ready to end it all soon. How could he be defeated by a noob like this? Who is this man really? And why is he so strong? While the man is disturbed by confusing thoughts, Hyun Wu comes for an attack that crushes him. He needs to block so much. To his surprise, he stands still, and Hyun Wu's attack lands without any problem. Because he blocked the pain, he doesn't know the condition of his own body. He is too injured and exhausted even to move his arms outstretched. Hyun Wu checks all the new items he won from this duel and prepares to enter the underground room to get the materials he needs. After obtaining the last material, he heads to the workshop. Hyun Wu sees a large blue capsule. This object automatically creates items for players. However, it cannot match skills. He can only use it once a month. Hyun Wu decides to make an X potion and give players a 20% increase for four hours. Then he lifts it in the air and admires the taste of the fruit. Now it's time for him to go and make money. Today, the X potion enters the arena shop for the first time. For a long time, everyone is surprised to see it. And there is only one item scarcity causing players from all over to go to the shop and bid on this potion. During the past six months, the price of the potion has increased exponentially. The highest price sold was 3,000, but eventually sold for 5,000 gold. Walking down the street this time, Hyun Woo thought to himself, one gold is about one dollar. With 5,000 gold, he could pay his father's hospital bills and living expenses, and then he still had about 2,000 gold left. No matter what path he took, whether it was a streamer or a pro gamer, he needed to improve his ranking and combat strength. He also needed better equipment. Using his remaining 2,000 gold effectively, he decided to get the most practical equipment rather than the one that looked the best. He bought himself a sword and some armor. All of them were quite rare items with good stats. The village chief looked up and was surprised to see that Hyun Wu had changed a lot since the last time he saw him a while ago. He looked very different. People on the streets wondered if he had joined a sect or something to develop so quickly, although the gear stats looked ridiculous. A yellow sword, a green shirt, and a man in red pants were the walking traffic lights. A little embarrassed by his appearance, Hyun Wu's face changed color just like his pants. He asked Dell to give him a quest to hunt a pack of wolves with red eyes, white fur, and sharp fangs. These monsters looked scary, but Hyun Wu wasted no time getting to work. With his increased stats, he felt much lighter on his feet. The expensive items were truly worth it. His quest was completed. As soon as he killed 15 wolves, he stopped worrying about his appearance because his equipment was clearly very effective. He wasn't in this game for fun. Every minute and every second of his time had to be spent making money. His goal was to reach level 10 today. So he headed towards the goblin's underground prison. Many others had the same idea. And in bustling places, a strong-looking man was recruiting close-range players for his underground prison party.
Hyun Woo approached him, asking if he could join. At first he said yes, but then he started scratching his chin and reconsidered. He told Hyun Woo that his party was advanced and that he should go and join a beginner's party instead because he had a low rank. Clenching his fist, he walked away, cursing the player. Even without a high level, he could easily face enemies like goblins. A blonde woman approached him and asked if he had any experience with goblin underground dungeons. It was his party's first time in the underground dungeon, so they were looking for someone with experience. She asked if he wanted to join their party. Hyun Woo accepted, saying he would gladly guide her through the underground prison like any other party member. Observing our protagonist with a disappointed and disgusted expression, the beautiful girl suggested that everyone introduce themselves. She was a level 20 priestess named Choi Somi, who lied through her teeth and told the party that she was level 20. Fortunately, her statistics were hidden, so they didn't know. Starting from the left, the other players introduced themselves, all in their 20s, and they were different. The warrior, archer, and wizard classes noticed that Hyun Wu didn't have any party resistance items. They asked if he would be okay in this underground room, and Hyun Wu reassured them. He had good mechanics, so he would be able to handle it on his own even without any defense items. They stood at the entrance to the underground room, a dark and gloomy cave with ugly goblins armed with weapons and shields ready to attack. Immediately, the warrior Jin Wu stood in front of the group, telling his members to get ready. They held their hollow tubes to their mouths. The goblins started shooting things at the party. Jin Wu raised his shield to block these attacks. He shouted at his team to protect themselves. They followed his orders. Mage Jia prepared her magic and Archer Chialman pulled back his arrow, ready to shoot magic that illuminated the goblins. It was like the 4th of July, and the arrows rained down on them like snow. Hyun Wu, looking up, was impressed. Despite being nervous about the well-defended underground prison, their party was a good team. It seemed like they didn't even need him as a member. Everyone played their roles. So, after hunting goblins for over an hour, things calmed down for a moment. The group took a quick breath. The party commented on Hyun Woo's skills, saying he was quite good out there and that he definitely used some extraordinary items. Somi suggested they rest well. They needed to make sure they were ready to challenge the hobgoblin later as planned. Hyun Woo was surprised to hear their concerns and asked if they had ever fought a hobgoblin boss before. Jin Woo was the only one with experience, and the others were inexperienced. He was a boss tough enough for players in their low twenties. It had also been a while since Hyun Woo defeated one. The party began discussing strategies. They looked to Kael Min, the young archer, jokingly asking him not to shoot them. He replied from behind, saying he wouldn't make that mistake again. With awkward smiles, they moved through the underground space until they reached the boss room. The hobgoblin sat on his throne with his lower-ranked minions standing between him and the entrance. The team moved forward. Somi buffed her party. She, Jin Wu, Chiol Min, and Jia used their long-range attacks, while Hyun Wu and Jin Wu led the frontline assault. The goblins fought back, and the men did their best to defend themselves in close combat. It is not too difficult with Somi's fans. Hobgoblin raised his hand and something seemed to emanate from him. Hyun Wu shouted to Jin Wu, telling him to avoid the incoming attack. But Jin Wu did not react. At the moment he was hit by the boss's dark ball attack, he was thrown back into the nearest wall. It would be troublesome if this enemy used the black ball attack again. So Hyun Wu needed to attack him. Before doing so, he asked for his team's support. But the team was shocked by what happened to Jin Wu, and they stood there watching Hun Wu cut down the goblin, previously of low rank. He wondered what his party was doing and why they were just watching. Hobgoblin began to prepare another magic attack in his hand, and it seemed that Hyun Wu would not succeed in time. As he attacked, an arrow came flying from somewhere and almost hit him. Hyun Wu blocked the arrow and it bounced off his sword, striking the boss in the eye. He let out a howl of pain on his face. While Hobgoblin was disturbed by the pain, Hyun Wu took the opportunity to cut off his arm. Losing an arm and an eye was truly painful. This person, Hyun Wu, called his teammates once again for help. This time they listened and struck the boss with magic attacks, and the arrow attack defeated him. The party stood in front of Hyun Wu with smiles on their faces.
because he was the one who did all the work. Hyun Wu observed the items dropped by the boss and pondered whether he should take them all for himself. Everyone at the party had friendly faces and seemed nice, but Hyun Wu was concerned they would kill him if he was too greedy. He decided to only take one random pet egg item and leave the rest for his party. With important matters to attend to, Hyun Wu walked away and bid farewell to the party members. He asked if he wanted to do this again sometime. However, Hyun Wu hurriedly left. He was worried about potential traitors and decided he couldn't relax. After leaving the underground room, he saw that he had successfully reached his goal of reaching level 10. And now, he could fight. Finally, he gained a class upgrade. He stood in front of the tall tower with his hands on his hips. This is the class tower, or better known as the Tower of Advancement. Each floor represents a different class that you can level up in. Inside, like a department store, it is a must visit. If a player manages to reach level 10, Hyun Wu holds the pet egg he just received in his hands, which can hatch into a random pet that can be anything from a rabbit to a dragon that he needs, waiting for an hour until the egg hatches. He decides that with this free time, he will get a new class for himself. He looks up at the tower and thinks hard about what he will choose inside the tower. He enters the warrior class floor and is approached by a warrior manager named Khan. Hyun Wu is here to become a fighter and Khan is pleased to hear it, saying it is a wise choice. The warrior class is different from the other classes on the lower floors. Khan will decide whether Hyun Wu is worthy or not to become a fighter with one fight. They both prepare their weapons. And Khan says he will let Hyun Wu take the first step to be fair. After being told, Hyun Wu approaches him. Our protagonist did not refuse and did what he was told. The attack came in strong and Khan blocked it. He thought to himself that the attack was strong, and Hyun Wu was definitely familiar with the sword. Clearly, he was different from the other players who came to his floor and tried to be a warrior. He was more than qualified to join his class. The attacks kept coming, and Khan kept blocking them. Smiling at the impressive strength of our protagonist, he was still a noob who had not yet obtained a worthy class. And when Khan counterattacked, it caught Hyun Wu off guard and knocked him to the ground. Although good, he clearly lacked the skills to defeat someone like Khan. When Khan made a second attack, Hyun Wu blocked it with his foot, and then immediately retaliated. At the same time, there was a natural flow to Hyun Wu's movements that did not follow traditional swordplay. Hyun Wu came in for another attack, while the warrior class manager wondered if this was what natural talent looked like. As Hyun Wu was about to land another blow, the manager shouted to stop, saying he was more than qualified to be a warrior. He acknowledged that Hyun Wu was very skilled, and he gave him permission to join the warrior class. Joining this new class gave him new skills all related to close combat and using his sword. Before parting ways, Khan tossed a coin towards Hyun Wu, telling him that once he was confident in his strength, they should go and find the owner of the coin. The coin was a new quest to meet a knight known as LeBron. When he was ready, the reward for his quest was a skill called LeBron's skill. LeBron was someone who led troops in the arena and was the strongest knight in his kingdom. A smile appeared on Hyun Wu's face. As he realized that by completing this quest, he would receive the strongest knight skill in the empire. Not wanting to waste any more time, he left the tower wondering why he was given this hidden quest but he did not complain that the quest was E-rank, so he had to reach around level 50 before he could go and do it. And now an hour had passed, and his random pet egg was about to hatch. Holding it in his hands, he wondered what he would get. He was very lucky today, so maybe it would be something good. Part of him wanted a dragon, but another part of him knew it would be too much to take care of. He was almost dying of anticipation. The egg finally hatched, and out came a cute little bear. Hyun Wu couldn't say anything when he saw his new pet animal. The bear could even talk. This made our protagonist even more amazed. A talking pet was something he had never heard of, so it was definitely unique. He began to wonder if he could make money by making her do many things. To his surprise, a bear jumped on his shoulder and started pulling his hair, demanding that he move forward. Not happy being ordered by some little bears, Hyun Wu grabbed it. He threw his new pet in anger saying that it needed to be taught a lesson. The bear was not happy, saying how dare Hyun Wu do this. 
He then insulted our protagonist by saying that he clearly never got any girl. He left the game, leaving him alone. After he just hatched a few minutes ago, his master returned to the real world instead. Hyun Woo left the cube arena. He took a deep breath. He had been there for a long time. Today, Young Chan entered the room and asked our protagonist, What has he achieved today? His friend was surprised to hear that he already had a class and a pet. He said that with those things, he already could. Then he would start preparing for his debut as a streamer. An empty expression appeared on Hyun Woo's face. When he realized his friend was right, he began to consider it. The job as a streamer has been paying quite well lately. Young Chan told Hyun Woo that there was something he needed to do. He wanted our protagonist to record the game. Every time he played like that, he could use clips to make promotional videos to be posted in the world arena. Hyun Woo smiled awkwardly. Although it sounded fun to become a streamer, it was easier said than done. But Yong Chan insisted. He would help and offered to be his manager. If the former number one player starts streaming, surely people would want to watch. A hopeful smile appeared on Hyun Woo's face, as he promised that he would try to meet his friend's high expectations. Sometime later, back in the game, he found a group of dark elves in the dark forest area, looking down at Tangy, since this was their first battle together. He expected a lot from his new pet who looked down at his sword. Hyun Wu had a surprised look on his face. As it began to glow green, it was revealed that Tangy had given him a buff known as the Bear Spirit that increased his strength and constitution. Looking back at his new pet, he thought the bear was a tank pet, and he felt confused to find out that it was actually a buff pet. One dark elf attempted to attack him when he was disturbed. However, it was unsuccessful, and he ended their subscription, thinking that his new pet could enhance his constitution, defense statistics, and provide him with continuous recovery buffs. It was actually quite useful. Hyun Woo continued to deal with more dark elves. A dark figure was seen hiding in the trees spying on our protagonist. It was revealed that there was actually a group of people there looking for their next victim. The group looked towards Hyun Woo and discussed their equipment, saying it was expensive and discussing how they would steal it. One side commented that our protagonist seemed quite skilled in combat, so they should be careful. Another party member thought he was an idiot. There was no way he was above level 20. And he was outnumbered. They were experienced thieves who would make quick work of it. Hyun Wu, our protagonist, became tired after fighting all the dark elves and wiped his forehead. He recorded his fight, as he said. He would defeat the dark elves and it wasn't too impressive. His pet bear made a comment about Hyun Wu. Frustrated, he took Tangy out of his head and began punishing him again. As the villains approached, they put on friendly faces and asked Hyun Wu if he was alone. And if so, did he want to join their party? They were happy to see another player here in the forest. That they seemed like an experienced party. So he wondered why they even wanted him to join. Furthermore, it seems like they are all wearing level 20 gear and one of them even has a sword that should be at least level 40. The fact that they hide their levels and approach our protagonist means that they are player killers. Hyun Woo smiles because this might be an opportunity for him. Hyun Woo accepts their invitation to join their party, and they start introducing themselves without revealing their real names. Hyun Woo introduces himself as Young Chan and acts friendly towards the villains. They are approached by more elves and continue working as a party to defeat them. However, Hyun Wu only uses his party as a shield. The human hiding behind them then quietly emerges. Every now and then, he launches a series of attacks, only to retreat and hide behind his party members again. His party members are strong, making monster hunting easy. His skill proficiency increases, leaps and bounds. One hour later, the party starts getting frustrated. All Hyun Woo does is hide behind them, and they realize that he is just using them. Even when they try to secretly attack our protagonist, he easily dodges them. They conversed privately, contemplating the duration they must carry on with this deed, prior to being able to do so, to rob Hyun Woo. Tangy deliberately eavesdropped on them, discussing how they would murder Hyun Woo solely for his valuable possessions. Tangy disclosed everything to his master. Their scheme to stab him from behind as they confronted their boss, and his duty was fulfilled. 
Thus, he planned to stab them from behind, first. By documenting such actions, it could lead to him gaining numerous views, as players who eliminate other players are typically not very well liked. His demeanor turned sinister. The party members emerged from their private discussion and apologized to our protagonist for making her wait so long. They stated that they would now hunt down the boss and asked if Hyun Woo wanted to join them. If Hyun Woo moved, comment that he might not be of much help against a boss and might only hinder the party. Saying that this is nonsense, he has high attack statistics, and they couldn't have come this far without him knowing their plans. Hyun Woo laughed and agreed to their proposition to fight the boss. Hyun Woo made a cocky comment, saying he will lead the party during the battle. The party members are now frustrated and eager to finally kill him. They head to the boss battle and start fighting against the elf chief. The elf chief proves to be no joke, and the party struggles against him. One small member named Calgate is sent flying backward by one of the attacks. The boss mocked him, saying that if he came to the Black Forest to test his strength, he should at least be somewhat strong. Upon his arrival, Cal wondered to himself why this boss was so difficult to defeat when he was only level 40. Even if he wore low-level gear, it should have been easy. The party continued to fight the boss, waiting for a signal from their leader to finally attack Hyun Wu. Buffs were used on all party members, signaling them to attack. The archer pulled back an arrow that had the ability to paralyze anyone it hit and aimed it at Hyun Wu. However, Tangy appeared behind him and gently breathed into his ear, distracting his attention. This caused him to miss his shot, and the arrow hit his own teammate. Cal, right on the archer's cheek, apologized to Cal, who was clearly very angry about the whole situation. Cal fell to the floor and was paralyzed. Hyun Wu also apologized for his pet's actions, saying that he was just a cute little rascal. He took to the air, letting their guard down. It wasn't the luxury of Hyun Wu's weak attack against both of them. He told the boss to release Crawford. To everyone's surprise, Hyun Wu actually attacked Crawford instead of the boss. He stabbed him in the side of his stomach, causing Crawford to bleed and ask why he attacked him instead of the boss. Hyun Wu commented that this was the ultimate act of betrayal. The party was stunned, with expressions wondering what he thought he was doing. Hyun Wu said that they needed to know when they were trying to stab someone in the back, so the same thing could happen to them. The boss elf stood there as well. He had never seen anything like this happen before, and was enjoying his tea. The party attacked our protagonist. In their anger, they were discovered and had to defend themselves, leaving the boss. Hyun Wu ran towards them, avoiding their attacks and preparing to retaliate using his own. The boss looked at the fallen foe on the floor. Then, angrily, he said that if he could move, this fight would be a piece of cake. The boss elf silenced him, saying that the loser should not have words. Hyun Wu took on two other party members alone, and they fought. Even though their levels were much higher than his, the boss elf watched, thinking that this human looked very interesting and unlike anything he had ever seen before. Our protagonist stood victorious after defeating the villains. They were just leveled up and their skills were pitiful. It wouldn't be easy to attract attention if the opponents were weak, but at least he got a funny video out of it. Now he just needed a strong opponent, one he could truly showcase his skills against. He looked at the elf boss, smiling to himself, thinking of a title for his video. Level 20 player defeats Dark Elf Boss. That title would make the perfect video. The battle between the two of them commenced. As they ran towards each other, the scene cut after the battle, and Hyun Wu showed a video recording to Yong Chan, stating that he was lucky enough to meet people like them. While he was recording, it seemed like it would be extraordinary. They just needed to find the right video editor, and they could get this show on the road. Hyun Wu wanted to know more about what he had planned. His friend would act as his manager. However, Young Chan remained silent. He said that he would soon find out a document printed with a title, creating a project to bring Kang Hyun Wu back to the top 1% of the world. Young Chan struggles to find a suitable editor online, whether they are really bad or unaffordable. He wonders if he should raise the salary, so he tries to attract more people. Finally, he stumbles upon a film by someone with the username Ellis. 
he thinks to himself that he has finally found an editor. It's a bit expensive, but they will be a perfect fit. She is a girl named Ellis, known as a video editor, to be a ghost among content creators. Alice invests careful attention into every frame of the video and uses carefully selected background music with color gradients that will captivate any audience. We see this video editor editing and watching clips sent by various clients to many people. Of those she insults, she calls them trash. She finds a request from young Chan, and she recognizes his name. Watching the video he sent, through her widened eyes at how amazing it is, she receives a reply for the job offer. Knowing the whole story about Hyun Wu killing the evil party and the dark elf boss, she will make a great video. She says she will be Meligod's best fan from now on and elevate him to the main stage of the arena. Returning with Hyun Wu, he suddenly shivered. He wondered if it was because the enemy was nearby, but he couldn't see anything. He decided that whatever the cause of the shivering was, it was not important at the moment, and checked the item in his hand. It was dropped by the one he had just defeated. It was a rare random skill book that gave the player using it a random rare class skill. He could sell it for a lot of money, or he could use it to acquire a skill. Scratching his head, he struggled to decide what to do, and asked for help from his pet, Tangy. In the end, he decided to use the item because unlike he didn't buy it with his own money. So he wouldn't lose by using it, allowing him to ignore his opponent's ten defenses, which he celebrated with Tangy because this was a good skill that would be very useful during battles. A few days later, his video was uploaded to the internet, showing how he stabbed from behind the party that initially tried to stab him from behind. Then there was an extraordinary response, especially from users who had been attacked by a similar party in the past. It didn't take long for his video to surpass 150,000 views. Young Chan knew that Ellis was the right video editor to choose, they also edited for them at a lower level, which meant that they had to like Yun Wu to support him. The older man is sitting at the table. He is the business team manager named Kale, and he is watching Yun Wu's video and enjoying it. Towards the end, he is even more surprised to see that it ended with a battle against the elf boss. Yun Wu avoids many attacks from the high-ranking boss. As if it was nothing to him, the fight doesn't even seem like a struggle, and he is impressed. The player at that level easily defeats the Dark Elf leader with his good control. This player has what it takes to be a star. He decides that he wants to contract our protagonist with Nike and contacts the channel owner for more information. Within the game, there is a lineup of orcs ready for battle. Hyun Wu does not rest and continuously fights against enemies with the help of his pet. He is ranking up much faster than he did on his first day. With all his knowledge this time, Everything is much easier. However, because he joined the game late, he needs that advantage to rank up quickly. After all the enemies he has killed so far, he is currently at level 24, and low-ranking enemies are a piece of cake for him. Now he is not the only one whose rank is rising and sharp. He is now at level 15. Among his pets, Hyun Wu has noticed that each one has different stat increases per level. Seeing how quickly his pet's stats are improving, he knows that Tangy is unique. Its buffs are great, and it should also be able to become a tank later on. Even if it's a bit annoying, at least it's useful. They start looting the bodies of the defeated orcs, searching for any items they can find. One orc has dropped a necklace, and Hyun Wu is surprised as he has never seen an item like this dropped by an orc before. The necklace gives him a new mission called Inheritor of the Grassland Wolf Tribe. She looked at the item with confusion, knowing that its mission was a delivery mission, and Hyun Wu had to deliver that necklace to the raccoon. However, in order for the raccoon to appear, he had to first defeat a raccoon monster boss, known as the Meadows Champion. Hyun Wu had a puzzled expression on his face. The champion would be very difficult to defeat, and the raccoon tribe leader might just be an NPC. Searching for an NPC he had never heard of seemed extraordinary. It was a quest that humiliated him, so he had to be at least level 30 and have a few more levels to go. Not wanting to stand still and do nothing, he grabbed Tangy and started working. It was time for him to grind. Not long after, he became frustrated as it took too long for him to level up alone. After spending so much time hunting enemies, he only increased his rank by one. Playing with a party would help him level up faster. 
but he needed to find someone he could truly trust. And someone who wouldn't stab him in the back. Disturbed by something that sounded like a bomb, he assumed it was magic. A battle was taking place nearby, with someone using magic attacks on an orc. It was a solo player who was a wizard. His name was Mason, and he had blonde hair and wore a blue robe. He was quite strong and managed to defeat the orc without any problems. However, his mana was running out too quickly and all his potions were almost gone. He decided to give up for today. There was a limit to how many mages could hunt alone. Suddenly, a figure appeared behind Mason and started talking to him. Seeing someone else in this secluded place made him scared. For a moment, he thought it was a monster. And when he turned around, he immediately cast a magical attack, without thinking that the person was human. Just as he was about to successfully avoid the attack that scorched his shoulder, Mason apologized to our protagonist. But Hyun Woo insisted that it was his fault for appearing out of nowhere. Mason asked if Hyun Woo needed something he noticed. He was dressed like a traffic light and strolling with a teddy bear doll. It was a strange sight, for sure, thinking that his magical powers and casting skills were quite good. Hyun Woo suggested that they both form a party, because they were alone. Mason was restless and didn't want to be stabbed in the back by any player. But he also knew that hunting alone was difficult. In the end, he agreed to form a party with Hyun Wu, who smiled that he finally had someone to hunt with. Elsewhere in the forest, we see more orcs challenging players to fight a knight in heavy armor wielding a heavy sword against the orcs. He is known as Sean and is a member of the Black Skull Guild, a guild that is the same as the man with purple hair. From the beginning, he joined other guild members. One of them is a woman named Gain, and also a younger member named Park Jun Woo with purple hair. He is excited because this is the first time he has been brought along after his account was deleted in a previous accident. And now the guild is helping him return to his previous rank by allowing him to join in the adventure. The reason he lost his previous account was all because of a character deletion bet. He lost against a beginner, and this beginner is Hyun Woo. And Jun Wu is the same purple haired man he fought against before. Jun Wu is determined to regain his rank and seek revenge on Hyun Wu with the help of his alliance. The alliance is becoming impatient as they cannot find many orcs coming out. At this rate, they will never help Jun Wu rank up. Finally, they manage to capture one. At that moment, Jun Wu rushes there to get the kill. After a while of finding nothing, the reason for not finding many orcs is because Mason and Hyun Wu have already defeated them all. As a party, the two of them have a system, where Hyun Wu attracts the attention of the orcs, and then Mason uses his long-range attack to take them all out. All they do is rinse and repeat this method, and both of them level up at a much faster pace. Looking to the side, they also see orcs that will appear, and Hyun Wu offers to face them, so Mason can save his mana. With a sword in hand, he confidently attacks the orc, knowing that it poses no threat. After defeating it, he looks up and sees Jun Wu also running towards the same orc. The young man immediately recognizes him from the character deletion. The protagonist reacts quickly by kicking Jun Wu in the face. As he falls to the ground, Hyun Wu pretends to apologize innocently, pretending that he mistook Jun Wu for a monster. Jun Wu is helped up by his alliance members. He stumbles to regain his composure and reclaim what is his. Finally, the words come out as he looks straight up, telling his alliance that Hyun Wu is the one who made him delete his previous character. Hyun Wu stood wondering what would happen next. Mason stood clueless about what was going on. Jun Wu pointed at our protagonist making accusations, while everyone stood around. Mason asked Hyun Wu if he knew this person and he replied that he was just his idiot friend who lost a character deletion bet, and now this salty fish just made Jun Wu even angrier. He said it with two guild executives beside him. He said today he would pay for what he did. One of the union executives called Prophet told him to calm down. He also said the same thing to Hyun Wu and added that he shouldn't test his patience. Hyun Wu seemed unfazed and said he wasn't afraid of any stupid alliance whatsoever. Mason expressed concern, and whispered to our protagonist that the members of the fellowship seemed to be at least level 60, and he did not want Hyun Wu to get hurt. We simply advised him not to get involved if the duel were to happen. The executive fellowship seemed quite indifferent about the whole situation, 
and ready to leave. However, Jun Wu got angry and threatened to report them to their superiors if they left. These people were just mocking their fellowship, and he did not deserve to just leave without punishing them. Another executive, Sean, hit Jun Wu in the face with his large and funny sword, causing Jun Wu's face to distort like a fish. He fell to the ground, and the executive union stood over him. They realized that if they killed Hyun Wu, there would be more orcs around them to level up. They began to consider it. Meanwhile, Hyun Wu did not back down from the duel, and once again offered a character deletion bet. Whoever loses must delete their player stunned by this beginner's arrogance. The guild masters accept bet on the condition that it was a captain's battle. A captain's battle is when two people from each side duel. After the duel, the winner stays, and the loser is replaced by another member of their team. The side that runs out of people first is considered to have lost the first duel, between Hyun Wu and Sean, who eagerly wanted to approach our protagonist. Finally, he silenced him and ended it with one blow. Hyun Wu, who was at a much lower level, responded that instead of defeating Sean with one blow, he would win by delivering ten blows, which was enough for Sean. He spoke and approached him with his heavy armor and sword. The attack was avoided by Hyun Wu, who also managed to cut through his opponent even through his armor. He stated that it was one and only nine more remained, since everyone was watching the battle. Now because Sean was angry, he recklessly swung his sword, our protagonist desperate to hit him with anything, because one shot would surely end the fight. Hyun Wu flowed like water through his attacks. Sean grew more frustrated as he saw none of his attacks landing. He had to make him defeat the level and item. How could there be so many differences between them? Hyun Wu replied to everyone and thought they could win just because they were at a higher level. But level and item are not important here, and it will not guarantee victory in battle. Even if someone is at a lower level than him, there is still a way they can damage him. He landed another attack on Sean, which so far was the third. His plan was to make Sean bleed from many wounds. It takes time. But Hyun Wu can do it. The user exits any level with this method. The duel ends before Sean realizes it, and Hyun Wu stands over his body. He moves his finger signaling to the other guild executives that it's his turn to fight now. This next battle turns out to be truly one-sided, favoring Hyun Wu. The opponent is too intimidated by our protagonist's skills and is defeated even without being able to land a single blow. Thus, only one challenger remains. The man with purple hair, Jun Wu, who is the reason for all this happening. He has a worried expression on his face that he spent all this time raising the level of his new character. But he has to delete it and start over. Just by looking at Jun Wu reminds our protagonist of his useful archenemy. They are both arrogant and spoiled and even have a similar appearance. This only makes Hyun Wu want to punish him even more as he points to the floor, telling the man with purple hair to beg. If he does so, then he might show mercy and save his life. Jun Wu starts to panic knowing he doesn't stand a chance in the game feeling the increased anxiety and fast heartbeat. The system decides to reward him by allowing him to enter a berserk state. His eyes turn red with anger. As he lets out a powerful roar using this anger, he gains the confidence to run straight towards our protagonist without thinking of defeat. He only thinks of revenge. However, Hyun Wu remains calm. He always knew this person is the type to get angry too quickly. He pulls his fist back and uses his monstrous strength ability to increase his damage. During a short period of time, a punch landed right on Jun Wu's face and brought him down to the ground with such great force to overwhelm his foolishness. The duel ended right then and there with victory granted to Hyun Wu. Winning, he received all of his opponent's belongings, and he could hardly contain his excitement. The players continued to give him their items. This was much better than hunting monsters. While Mason was still in shock from the three battles his new friend had just won, he said it was so cool that he could defeat someone of a higher level just with his shining eyes technique. With admiration, as he said he would be Hyun Woo's number one fan. They both went back to hunting for the day. At the end of the day, Mason sent a friend request to our protagonist. Hunting together was a great help for both of them and they should do it again sometime. Hyun Wu agreed 
and accepted the friend request while bidding farewell to Mason. From the work he did today, he was able to reach level 31. There weren't many naive kids like Mason in this game, and Hyunwoo was grateful for his help. He felt that the two of them would get along well in the future. Tangy is exhausted from doing so much work and wants to rest, but Hyun Woo doesn't have time for all that. He is now at a high enough level to try the quest he previously received titled The Inheritor of the Grassland Wolf Tribe. He has to defeat a boss known as the Grassland Champion Monster Boss, which usually appears randomly in their area with a respawn time of about 12 hours. Hyun Woo is angry when he sees that the boss still hasn't appeared. Since he has been playing for more than 12 hours, Tangy pleads with his master to rest. He is tired and can barely walk. Hyun Woo starts to agree. He is tired too, and they see a door sticking out from under a tree, and they think it might be a good place to rest. The door confuses Hyun Woo because he doesn't remember ever seeing it there. Before approaching it, they find out that it is the door they need to defeat the boss. Tangy is frustrated because he wants to rest. But Hyun Woo is very excited that he can continue to progress in the game and is eager to start. He enters through the door with a smile on his face, crashing into the towering enemy. With his six-pack abs, Hyun Woo stands level with this person's stomach. This is the grassland champion he's been looking for, and his name is definitely Dakan. It's a threatening sight, and the boss demands to know what Hyun Woo is doing here. Hyun Woo doesn't think he'll be able to defeat this person at his current level. He nervously pulls out the necklace and says he has to send it to the raccoon who can try to take the necklace. But our protagonist withdraws. In the final seconds, this happened repeatedly. For a while, the boss tried to take the necklace, and Hyun Woo tried to defend it. Dokken became frustrated, ordering him to surrender it. If that's what he's here for, Hyun Woo insists on handing it over to the raccoon himself. That's his quest. Dokken states that if he wants to meet this raccoon, he must first prove that he has a certain amount of strength. He will test our protagonist to make sure he is strong enough. Dokken immediately grabs Hyun Woo's head with one hand. Like a basketball, he lifts him into the air and throws him across the room, as if it was nothing. Before Hyun Woo can react, he is already attacked with a sword in hand, a swing hitting the floor, shattering it from the force of the blow. As the dust clears, Dokken looks down in surprise. He no longer sees Hyun Woo. The floor is empty. Our protagonist emerges from the smoke and hopes to counterattack using the element of surprise, although it doesn't work well. Dokken sees through his efforts to block and retaliate with little effort. Level 31 is still very weak, and Hyun Woo knows this person is too strong for him to defeat. Dokken stands tall and impressed with our protagonist's appearance. If he wants to meet the raccoon, then he must do better. He asks if this is all Hyun Woo has to offer with his health. In a low state, Hyun Woo begins to lift himself from the floor with ambition in his eyes. He hasn't used all his strength yet, but he calls Tangy to battle and asks him to provide some buffs. Tangy is annoyed because he was trying to rest and has already entered the fight again. After five minutes, both of them briefly argued. In the midst of the quarrel, Dakan was surprised to see Tangy and acknowledged the fact that Dakan and Tangy knew each other. This was news for Hyun Woo, who struggled to believe it. But indeed, Dakan had talked enough and stomped his foot on the floor. This was the middle of the test, and Hyun Woo had to pass if he wanted to meet the raccoon. Tangy told Hyun Woo that he needed to fight again. He thought it wouldn't be enough, but at least he was stronger than before. Then Tangy activated a buff on the elder, giving strength to Hyun Woo. The young man shone with a green glowing effect around his body. As they prepared to face each other again, their confidence did not last long. Even though Hyun Woo was thrown to the ground once more, he did not give up. Angry at himself, he stumbled up from the ground. While Tangy tried to console him by saying he fought well, he replied that it didn't matter. If he thought about it, he didn't come close to winning, stating that he didn't say he had to defeat him to pass the test. All he needed to do was prove himself. He said he had done this with unwavering determination to fight until the end. He had proven himself and passed the test. And as a reward for passing the test, he received an item known as the Dakan Necklace. He also received notice that the raccoon would now appear. Their celebration was interrupted by something falling that surprised Hyun Woo and his pet. 
we see the man known as the raccoon, although his name is Raccoon. But he was not a raccoon. Instead, he was big and menacing. He was even more frightening than the Dakan. The Dakan informed the raccoon that Hyun Wu had come here today to deliver the necklace to him, that he had found out the information. This surprised the raccoon, who grabbed Hyun Wu and began to shake him, demanding the necklace. Not wanting to upset him, Hyun Wu quickly handed over the necklace. That belonged to a man named Cancun. He is the son of a raccoon and a future tribal leader. He despises the rigorous training given by the raccoon. And he has a habit of running away. To prevent this, he is forced to wear a necklace that can track his location and summon him any time. Because the tribal leader is still angry, and for some reason the raccoon screams loudly, asking this person named Cancun to be brought to him. I will approach him immediately and ask him to calm down. We obtained the background of the necklace and why it is so important. And he has a habit of running away to fight against this. He is forced to wear a necklace that can track his location and summon him any time. It has a mantra that prevents him from removing it, but someone helped him out of it, so he could run away forever. And what do you know? The one who broke the spell turned out to be Hyun Wu's pet, Tangy, who completely ignored his story. Hyun Wu is only impressed that Tangy is capable of such things. The raccoon apologizes to his guest for getting so angry, and he says he will reward them properly for bringing him the necklace. He gained a lot of experience and new skills, one of which is the skill of condensing magic that enhances his magical power. Magic skills are highly sought after in this game. The raccoon leaves our protagonist with one final quest. If he sees his son Cancun on his journey to let him know that his home is in the Black Forest, excited to receive another quest, Hyun Wu shakes hands with the raccoon and instructs him to hand it over to him. He can handle it. It's not a problem. The raccoon also reveals that initially there was no mantra on the necklace and it was only used as a placebo effect. Tangy becomes upset when Hyun Wu realizes this, that he actually has the skill to break the spell. In the real world, Hyun Wu was awakened by his friend. After playing so many arenas, he was exhausted and couldn't even distinguish between real life and the online world anymore, thinking that young Chan was there to give him a quest. But in reality, he gave our protagonist good news. First, his video from before exploded and got 170,000 views. Second, he received an email from Nike management expressing interest in him. Nike is a big fashion company that recently entered the streaming arena, and now they are the number one company for arena management, and they want to recruit our protagonist. And he was very surprised by this information, just a week since he returned to this game. Young Chan showed Hyun Woo the contract offered by Nike, and offered to call them back for him as a good friend. At Nike headquarters, the business department handles contracts. Kale showed the contract to his boss, stating that Hyun Wu has set his streamer username as Ali Boss. But Kale likes to call him Mr. G. Jamie is the Nike management representative and the person talking to Kale. According to him, Kale is joking with the nickname Mr. G, abbreviated as MG, which is the same initials as Maligod's name. Jamie knows very well that he will never forget the top-ranked player from two years ago. Jamie looked out the office window, unable to believe that they could recruit such a big shot. After two years, Maligod has returned to the arena. This will truly shake the entire game. What we are currently witnessing is Hyun Wu celebrating with Young Chan. He is curious about how big of an impact the return of this ranker will shake the world of the arena. In just one week, he has been able to completely transform his life, only by rejoining the game. Back in the game, Hyun Woo headed to the auction house to sort out his items. He seemed to be choosing between which items he wanted to sell and which ones he wanted to keep. After selling the items he obtained from the party he killed and the Black Skull Alliance, he ended up with 51,000 gold and a pair of shoes. He also received a necklace from a forgotten quest that boosts every stat. While in battle, his statistics were no joke. If Hyun Wu combined all the items he had obtained so far, his statistics were almost the same as a level 60 user, even though he was only level 32. Now he thought it would be better if he could get a unique weapon, with his remaining gold being the most important. He now needed items with attack power. Things like defense penetration were not very useful for him. As he suspected, 
it wouldn't be easy to try to get a unique class weapon with only 5,000 gold. However, to his surprise, he managed to find it at the auction. The dwarf sword made by the dwarf gold hammer was only a thousand gold. Realizing this was a fantastic deal, our protagonist jumped at the chance to buy this item. Elsewhere in the auction house, the scene shifted to a player with a confused expression on his face. He was the Black Skull Guild master named Swearin. He was the one who listed the sword for sale, and it was revealed that he accidentally missed a zero from the actual price. It should have been 10,000 gold. He was not happy and yelled at a woman next to him, telling her to find out who bought the sword and to bring that person to him immediately. Hyun Wu, who had just left the auction house with excitement over his new weapon, had three days until he signed a contract with Nike, and he wanted to become stronger. As he remembered the coin he received from Khan when he returned to the class tower that gave him a mission, he realized it had a good reward he decided that it might be a good idea to embark on this quest. Walking along the road, he stretched his body. He had to go to a kingdom in a place called Yusma. He wondered how much a teleportation scroll would cost to take him to the place called Yusma. He was ready to undertake his search, which required him to meet a famous knight named Lebron. He approached the front gate of a giant house that could be understood to belong to the empire's strongest knight, living at a completely different level than others. The guards refused to let Hyun Wu in until he showed them the coin he received. The guards did not argue and let him pass. They told him that he could find the person he was looking for. As he entered the training hall in the middle of the plantation, everyone looked at him in disbelief. Many of them even tried to sneak in with our protagonist, claiming they were in the same party. Thinking about it, Hyun Wu had never seen a video of LeBron before. So he decided to achieve a record so that he could capture this moment. When he arrived at the location, he saw a sturdy man sitting on the floor, with crossed legs and eyes closed, even with eyes closed, and asked if he was the one who came on behalf of the recommendation, right? The man was LeBron, and it had been a long time since an adventurer had been looking for him. And if Khan had recommended our protagonist, then he must be skilled. He asked if Hyun Wu was here to test his strength. But Hyun Wu stated that he was only here to complete the sword fighting quest revealing more about someone than a thousand words. LeBron wanted to know if Hyun Wu was ready for the test, and threw a wooden sword at him. Hyun Wu became a little annoyed. It seemed like he had to fight everyone he met just to prove his skills. His technique was unique. He even used his feet. LeBron knew that most knights would not be able to defeat our protagonist, but in the end, he only awarded Hyun Wu 50 points and knocked him back. So far, there have been about 10 challengers, and none of them have scored higher than 50. LeBron began to think that maybe Hyun Wu was the same as the others. Knowing he couldn't win, Hyun Wu just said he would do whatever he could. As he ran towards LeBron using his brave skills, LeBron blocked the attack, but someone used a bash and ran. At that distance, it came as a surprise to him. While in the air, Hyun Wu appeared behind the famous knight and ready to deliver a crushing blow. He swung his sword directly at LeBron's neck as he landed on the floor. LeBron looked very impressed with Hyun Wu, because he was brave enough to attempt a dangerous attack, even knowing the difference in their skill levels. Not only that, but the attack was also done in the air. He awarded our protagonist a chance. 80 points for effort. Hyun Wu was ready to hear what skills he would learn to pass the exam. However, LeBron told him that the exam was not over yet, and there was more. He advised our protagonist to take a stance and prepare to do his best, with a smile on his face as he saw the talent within Hyun Wu. Hyun Wu seemed unimpressed when he realized that his test was to balance some food on his head without dropping it. LeBron shook his hand, acknowledging that he had great skills among the nine others who had challenged him, and impressed LeBron. Hyun Wu received many notifications indicating that he had gained experience and even a new title known as a rising star acknowledged by LeBron. And the effect boosted all his statistics by 10%. He also received a skill book that dropped for him. When he opened the book, it gave him a master battle skill that increased all statistics by 10%. Furthermore, during battle, two 10% stat increases totaled 20%, and Kang Hyun Wu couldn't believe it. Then LeBron bid farewell. But Hyun Wu didn't want to leave. He felt like this was not enough and wanted this mission to continue. 
He asked LeBron if there was anything he could do for him. LeBron actually has something he can do, and it gives him a new quest. Many undead have appeared in the Southern Brig, and His Majesty suspects that it is the work of the magician behind it. LeBron wants Hyun Wu to investigate the situation for him. Upon seeing the new quest he just received, Hyun Wu realizes that he is leading the first episode and now he will assist with the fourth episode. Its value is MS, which stands for Main Scenario. The Main Scenario quest is a fundamental quest related to the storyline of the arena that affects the entire game. LeBron warns that the magicians may specialize in necromancy and psychic magic, so he must be cautious and careful not to be deceived. Hyun Wu is proud of himself, only at level 33. He is here to complete the main scenario mission. At the auction house, Sueron is still unhappy about his missing sword. Shaking his members angrily, he asks why they haven't found it yet. Hyun Wu passes by this scene and wonders what is happening. After realizing that Sueron's people are looking for it, he decides to remain silent. He also notices from the emblem on their armor that these people are from the Black Skull Alliance. He seems unable to escape from these people. He logs off and removes his headset, and returns to the real world. Although he is in the real world, he is still thinking about the game, wondering what is the best way to do his new quest, and how he should deal with the Black Skull Alliance Guild. Young Chan entered the room, informing the protagonist that he had prepared food for him. Upon hearing about the problems Hyun Wu and the Guild were facing, he suggested that he upload a video that would provoke them. Posting a declaration of war on the community board would make it visible to the public, and the guild would not be able to ignore it. Doing this would also gain more publicity for Hyun Wu. His friend's idea was brilliant, and he knew it. He smiled with food around his mouth, stating that he would defeat the entire alliance alone. The next day, the declaration of war was posted on the community board, and chaos ensued at the headquarters of the Black Skull Alliance. They watched the viral video. Hyun Wu talked about Jun Wu from the Black Skull Alliance and how he made him delete his character and start over twice. He had decided that he would do anything to make all the other union members delete their characters as well. There were only 15 executive members in the guild, and Hyun Wu had already defeated two of them. He also managed to sell his sword at a cheap price. The fellowship members were seen sitting around a large table, discussing what they knew about this new player the one who recently challenged them. His username was Ali Boss, and he was at level 30. However, seeing that he could take down two executives by himself, the Fellowship believed that he was hiding something. Thinking of ignoring such a thing made their stomachs churn, and they began shouting. They had to uphold the guild's reputation. And this little rogue also took his rusty sword. Someone suggested that they arrange a meeting for a duel, and then they could all gang up on the kid and beat him together. Sueron started considering this seriously, until a woman appeared calling him pathetic. She was the captain of the World Guild named Young Gu. Thinking of the entire guild conspiring against a level 30 player was ridiculous. The Black Skull Guild was shocked and wondered why the captain, who acted as their leader, had traveled all the way here. She told a man named Cheogu to come to her. Then she started hitting his stomach, seemingly monopolizing the underground space without reporting it and her patience wore thin. Yunggu then directed her attention to Sueron. She told him to record a video as a response and proceed with the offered duel. He had to handle this with dignity. The weak would naturally be consumed by the strong. This player was known as Ali Boss. The Black Skull Alliance is preparing to fight our protagonist after Hyun Wu challenged them in a video. A man named Kale, the business team manager from Nike, is seen sitting at a table in a restaurant. He is wearing a suit that looks like he is preparing for an important meeting. Our protagonist, Hyun Wu, arrives wearing a long blue jacket with his signature messy hair. He sits in front of Kale, and Kale comments that he looks much better in person and his English is very fluent. Hyun Wu thanks him. They both prepare to discuss business over dinner. The protagonist looks at the new contract offered by Nike and reads it carefully. His eyes widen like his friend's. Young Chan says this is the best condition he could hope for at the time, to join a big company like Nike. Kale tells him to read the last part because it was recently added. It states that his contract is for two years, and he will receive $10,000 for every 10,000 customers. And every month, 
he will also receive unique class materials. Hyun Woo smiled. With these ingredients, he could create many secret recipes that he made in his first game. Kale smiled happily. Seeing our protagonist satisfied with the offer, he honestly didn't think it would be enough for someone as big as Meligod. Hyun Woo smiled awkwardly. He hadn't heard that name in a long time and wondered how Nike knew about it. Kale continued to say that Hyun Woo had to wear the Nike logo on his items and would have to consult with a stylist once a week. He asked what his next plan was. Our protagonist planned to start streaming next week and had actually prepared something big that people could look forward to. Kale still smiled, knowing that if Meligod called something big, it would definitely be something to look forward to. After our business meeting, our protagonist returned home and was immediately greeted by Young Chan, who was happy to hear that he had signed a contract. He told Hyun Woo that the Black Skull Guild had made a response video calling him and informed him to meet them at the Yusma Coliseum in two days at 8 o'clock in the evening. Our protagonist was not bothered by this and didn't even watch the video. He immediately returned to the arena to go hunting. A lizard man stood in front of him with sharp yellow eyes and sharp teeth. He could easily defeat it. What surprised him was that the lizard men in this swamp were between level 60 and 70. He was only level 34, so there was a level difference of 30. However, they didn't pose a threat, and even seemed a little afraid. He assumed that he must be much stronger. With all the items and skills he had recently learned, he may have underestimated how strong he actually was. The guild master of Black Skull Sueron should be at level 85, while the average level of other executives is around level 70. He didn't think he would lose, but it's still a good idea for him to become stronger. He continued hunting monsters for over 30 hours. He took a short break in between, but essentially it was 30 hours of physical work during this grinding session. He managed to defeat the lizard man boss and other exhausted creatures, but the fatigue didn't stop there and he worked hard. Over the next three days, he was able to level up six more times, increasing his current level to 40. Well, he clearly isn't afraid to do the job. Today is the day of the duel between our protagonist and the Black Skull Alliance. The atmosphere in the Colosseum is booming with anticipation from the crowd. Everyone is livelier than usual, and the spectators are discussing things among themselves. Although Hyun Wu is outnumbered, they will have a one-on-one -on -one battle with the captain, so it will be fair for him. One of the spectators adjusts his glasses to get a better view. He has his money on our protagonist standing in front of the members of the Black Skull Alliance. The strongest one is still wearing his ridiculous traffic light armor. There are a total of 13 members that he needs to fight against Sueron. He is getting excited to start and confident that he will win. Plus, if he defeats our protagonist, he will be able to retrieve his lost cursed sword from the auction. On the contrary, Hyun Wu is not threatened by the players in front of him. It would be embarrassing for Sueron to die with his own sword. He called through the microphone from the thin air and began to speak to the crowd. The strange mask on his face concealed his appearance. He thanked the audience for waiting and showed appreciation. For everyone who came to see him, they applauded. He will make sure the audience is truly entertained. Young Chan watched everything happening in the real world while sipping a cup of hot chocolate. The winner takes all in the battle, and the loser must delete their character. What our protagonist says next surprises young Chan, causing him to choke on his hot chocolate and spill it all over his body. Also surprising the Black Skull Alliance, their faces looked confused, especially Sueron who seemed to be trying to fart. They all looked like this because Hyun Wu suggested that they do team battles instead of captain battles, which means he wants to fight all 13 of them at once. The entire audience collectively flinched, forming a combined expression of disbelief. They wondered if they heard what they thought they just heard. Sueron's face was still covered in anger, but there was a hint of concern there now, as he wondered what our protagonist was planning. Sueron thought there was no chance for Hyun Wu to win in a captain's battle against all of them one-on-one. -on -one. But this person wanted to fight everyone at the same time in a team battle. He seemed like a psychopath ready to face more enemies, although he had no chance in the captain's fight. Was he really thinking he could win against 13 people at once? He was sure that Hyun Wu was hiding something. Our protagonist asked them to hurry and decide if they still wanted to participate. Sueron pointed his finger down with a black nail polish on his thumb. 
His alliance accepted the challenge no matter what he planned. They would still win the battle confirmed one against thirteen, and it would definitely be a very enjoyable sight. And to see that, Hyun Woo took out his weapon and threw his scabbard to the floor. In front of him stood the Black Skull Alliance that looked like titans compared to him, the deputy guildmaster. Cholga asked if he defeated this punk alone. Could he take all his belongings for himself? Sueron agreed, but said he wanted his sword back. Everything else could go to him. Kyolgu approached our protagonist confidently calling him an idiot. The man had chubby cheeks and a buzz cut. He laughed, saying that our protagonist may have good skills and items, but they couldn't win against manpower. Behind him stood the entire guild with 70 and 80 ranked players. Hyun Wu said that if their strength was represented by numbers, then this fool should not have come alone. He swung his sword before the chubby man could even react. It pierced him instantly like slicing through a piece of paper. His players began to disappear as he was defeated. Sueron's mouth dropped in the background. Keolgu ranked second in the guild, yet he was easily taken out in the duel. Stepping into the arena, he said that our protagonist should not be underestimated. The man on the left was Seogang. He had a bat-shaped mask covering his eyes on the right. With blue hair was Siowan, who also had covered eyes. They both leaped into the air and descended onto our protagonist like bombs. Despite their covered eyes, this duo was the best in the guild. Hyun Wu was just built differently and took them both out immediately, grabbing Shogang's spear and lifting his sword to seal someone's neck. He said that they were both too predictable and their attacks were simple. With a sweep of his sword, he took out Siowan, and the duo was now a solo act. Hyun Wu ran toward Seo Gang until their noses almost touched. Xiao Gang held a spear, not a great weapon at such close range. Xiao Gang didn't have much solo action, and he was almost instantly defeated. All that we see is a bright explosion of the power of the blow. After that, Hyun Wu turned around with a dwarf sword on his shoulder, asking what all the other players were doing and why they hadn't approached him yet. The crowd roared at the spectacle they were witnessing. They couldn't believe that our protagonist, using the username Boss Alley, had taken out the three of them. He raised his sword to the remaining members, saying they should just surrender. Since then, their characters would be deleted. The way many people joined in the mockery calling the fearful Black Skull Alliance and shouting for them to surrender. The players looked like they didn't know what to do. Our protagonist had caught them off guard. Sueron saw it. There were still ten of them, so they all had to attack at once. However, Hyun Wu didn't give them time to react. He lunged towards them, swinging his sword and defeating even more. He knew that if he didn't give them a chance to group up, it basically came down to many one-on-one -on -one matches. He basically had the entire alliance in the palm of his hand. Like a puppeteer defeating all the high-level players, this would make a great video and make him even more famous. He went for the players one by one. Although their armor was thick, it was no match for the strength of our protagonist and his sword strikes were sharp. In the end, there were only three players left. Sueron and two others had dwindled the herd from thirteen to three. Threatening the success of our protagonist only made Sueron angrier. He ordered his comrades to attack if they could win. They could still save all their defeated party members from being erased. If they didn't win, it would only be more embarrassing. The more they revealed that they no longer enjoyed the arena as before, and were too focused on levels and items. They didn't mind having their characters deleted. What remained now was Sueron, the perpetrator of all this ordeal. He hung his head in shame. As his comrades emerged from his side, wondering how everything had come to this, when he first formed the Black Skull Alliance, it was just a way for him to have fun. With others in the arena, over time, the guild became more obsessed with becoming stronger and stronger, and now suddenly they were seen as villains by every other player. The crowd cheered for our protagonist to kill Sueron, as if he was just an ant waiting to be stepped on. Sueron took a step forward, slamming his foot on the ground in front of Hyun Wu, who actually didn't expect anyone else to surrender. Even though he was alone, his hand was steady. He told our protagonist that this wouldn't be the end of the Black Skull Guild. Even if their characters were deleted, they would start again. And next time they met, the guild wouldn't just be his villains and would put up more of a fight. In the final blaze, the skulls of fury soared. 
the black flag of the guild waved high on its back. As he approached certain defeat, Hyun Wu, of course, won the duel, and the cheers of the audience overwhelmed 13 players at once, causing damage. His username is the boss of the alley, and that name spread throughout the world like a wildfire. He is known as the embodiment of justice for defeating the guild that has caused so much trouble for others. For his victory, our protagonist obtained all the items from the players he defeated. And because of this event, others began to take an interest in his journey. In the crowd is a blonde-haired man who is the manager of the Black Skull Alliance. Kang Jung-gu, the vice captain of the New World Guild, adjusted his monocle in the crowd. His armor sparkled, and a blue gem lay on his chest. He looked down on our protagonist as he collected his belongings, telling himself that he would make him pay for what he had just done by destroying the guild he managed. He wouldn't let it go so easily. After Hyun Woo's first live streaming, he quickly became a hot topic online. His username spread widely, and many sponsors and streaming platforms started flocking towards him. However, this partnership opportunity created some issues within the arena. This blonde man, who goes by the name Milo, is the master of a large guild. His hair is spiked like a Street Fighter character, and his eyebrows are thick. One of his subordinates informed him that the guild has received less money from sponsors because they have all gone to our protagonist. Milo is not pleased with this. All the sponsors want to sign this gang boss, which means everyone is fighting after hearing that our protagonist is only level 50, making him even angrier. He slammed his fist on the table, instructing his subordinate to bring this player back to the guild or destroy him. The person he spoke to understood and hurriedly left. This time, the protagonists are discussing the search for the main scenario, and LeBron, the guild master named Carrie, orders his subordinates to find this player who is currently leading all the main scenario quests. It seems that our protagonist is a popular man with everyone wanting a part of him for completing 100 consecutive victory quests. He received a reward that increases his damage to other humans by 20%. And on top of that, he also received a new luxurious ring. It enhances his strength statistics and also gives him a skill known as Giant Power. This item is part of a set and he already has another similar one. If he can find the last one, then he will complete the set. Hyun Woo is very happy thinking about his life in the past few weeks. Everything has been going very well for him. Looking at Tangy, who is eating chicken, he is surprised that his pet is very popular in streaming and he should definitely take it out more often. With all these rewards, he even momentarily forgets about the Emperor. Surely he has proven his worth now and he can't wait to see his greatness again. After Tangy finishes his chicken, they hurriedly return to the palace post. So he must be skilled enough to just show his respect by humbling himself. He is still a little afraid of the Emperor and not strong enough to fight him. He needs to reach level 300 even before he gains the confidence to stand tall. The emperor throws him a blue marble with a black circle on top. He gives him a mission to go to the desert and find someone named Aldred. On top of that, he has heard that the rebel forces are increasing in number at that location. He gave him a moment of searching to find out more information about them. While still trembling, our protagonist accepted the search, saying he would do his best and work as fast as possible. And without wasting time, he immediately headed to the desert, which was the place where he first participated in the main quest scenario in his first game when he became a melee god. It was home to monsters like this strange scorpion, with three pairs of eyes and green plus spitting something from its mouth. They were no problem for Hyunwu and Tangy. Although neither of them knew exactly where to go, they spent a long time walking across the desert, until they saw a village. Tangy seemed not so confident and just annoyed as she walked in the hot weather. Fortunately, someone approached them wearing a long robe, and it seemed like this was the person they were looking for. He led them to the village. Once inside, he held the blue marble in his hand. He had a mustache and a large bandana on his head. He was a knight captain named Aldred. He thanked our protagonist for the marble and said he was lucky to find it. As he was patrolling because it was an item from the emperor himself, he would reward Hyun Woo accordingly. Aldred gave him a skill book for a skill known as Crescent Moon Cut. Hyun Woo couldn't believe it was a skill that could attack from both short and long range, 
and could make his hunting twice as fast. He quickly regained his composure and asked the man in front of him if he had heard anything about the rebel forces mentioned by the emperor. Aldred's face changed in surprise upon hearing these words. He wondered how our protagonist knew about them. The emperor must trust him to give him this information. Aldred took out a map from his pocket. In three marked places, he said these were the most likely places to find answers. Hyun Wu noticed one of the markers in a place called Lipa Castle. The man told him that he believed there was an informant there who had helped the rebels steal supplies. After completing his first mission, our protagonist prepared for the second one. On this list is the Tuma tribe, an area inhabited by desert scorpions and goblins. Hyun Wu remembered the secret location there since he played his old character. He believed that this would be the key to completing his quest. He stood on the edge of the cliff with his pet animal below, a steep drop to the large cactus. Like a madman, he gripped the terrified Tangy. They jumped from the cliff straight into the large, sharp cactus. Tangy froze, but Hyun Wu looked excited. He knew that if he could clear this main quest scenario on his own again, he would be far ahead of all the other players and would receive an incredible reward. Scene cut to them standing next to a different cactus a few moments later. Over the past two years, many players have crossed this desert, but none have ever found the underground chamber that was being guarded. That's because it was hidden inside one of these troublesome plants. Not pleased with being constantly pricked by thorns, Hyun Wu insisted they keep walking because he knew there was an underground prison in one of them for revenge, driven by our protagonist holding his pet tightly. He then threw it at the cactus, saying that he should have done this all along instead of getting pricked himself. Tangy was not hurt and passed through the cactus, revealing that this was the underground prison they were looking for. Yun Wu followed his pet. In the sky, glowing red and orange, an oddly shaped mountain protruded from the ground. He admitted that it had been a long time since he had been here, so his memory was fuzzy. But they finally made it. This was a desert hidden within another desert. Tangy was upset, although tears flowed down his face as his master threw him into the cactus. Hyun Wu, apologizing, stated that he would never do it again. They were approached by a strange creature that our protagonist had never seen before. It was a mutant desert lizard with red eyes and a scaly body that Hyun Wu had never even heard of. Such things from other players in the community billed the monster to him, and he realized it didn't matter if he had never seen it before. It stood at only about five meters tall, and he had faced worse. He attacked with his sword, but it didn't pierce the creature's tough skin, and considering its strength and stamina, it must be at least level 100. If he didn't attack it properly, he would never be able to penetrate its scales. He called his pet to ask for help, who is still angry about the cactus. He bribed his pet by saying he would let it ride on his shoulder for four hours. After Tangy came to help him, he finally gave him a buff. As he prepared to attack the lizard with a powerful strike, he thrust his sword straight into its back and turned wondering if he had successfully damaged the object the monster screamed in pain. However, it was not defeated and started spinning. While our protagonist desperately held onto it as if he was riding a mechanical bull trying to throw him off, he let go while riding its back. Hyun Wu noticed that the weak point was black and round and sat right in front of him. He drew out his second sword and swung it to the right. This attack surprised the mutant desert lizard for a moment, telling itself that this was the end of the battle. He gripped the sword still stuck in its back with both hands and swung it upwards. He jumped off its back, throwing it high into the sky and defeating it. Hyun Wu also fell down. His landing was covered in desert sand. He gained a lot of experience points from it, but he thought they would be too difficult to achieve, trying to find its weak point, so it might be easier next time. He thought to himself that finding a new monster species would be a good video topic and he should contact his video editor. On the protagonist's day, our protagonist sent his first video to Ellis. The video editor swore that if he could edit Hyun Woo's video for the rest of his life, he would do it for free. Watching the footage of him fighting this new species, Ellis knew he made the right choice. He watched the video repeatedly and finished all our protagonist as if he had never been out for a decade. Now on Friday, it is the next Hyun Woo streaming day. 
The video of him hunting the new species went up this morning and was enough to build a lot of hype for this stream, with almost 50,000 viewers. He put on his mask and broadcasted live to his audience. He told everyone that he found where the leader of the lizards was, and today he would do a solo attack. Comments came quickly. Feeling hard to believe that he would actually succeed in pulling it off, donations followed closely behind. Hyun Woo told everyone to hold off on donations until after the boss fight. He wouldn't pay attention and would feel bad if he ignored it. He also said that he wouldn't read the chat either because he needed to concentrate. He glanced upwards, spotting a large dragon perched on a rock. It was red with sharp horns curving inward and spikes running down its spine resembling teeth. The claws leaped from a rock and spread its wings, creating a strong gust of wind that slapped Hyun Woo's face. This activated his master combat skill, boosting his statistics according to the strength of the enemy he was facing. Hyun Woo grinned at his audience, stating that while the dragon may be huge, it would die in a few hours. So they didn't need to worry about its weak spot on its back like the others. Hyun Woo drew his sword and prepared to use his new attack he learned from Aldrin. He struck the dragon's neck with a crescent moon slash. A trail of blue light followed the path of his sword, and the boss was pushed back slightly, seemingly not doing much damage. However, when the dragon looked down towards Hyun Wu with red eyes, smoke floated out of its partially open mouth. Our protagonist leaped high into the air, and the battle continued. He was ready to face this fierce beast, and put on a great show for all his viewers. It seemed like the raid boss was about to begin. Raid boss. It refers to the battle against a high-level boss. Usually it is done by parties, and each member fulfills a specific role when someone attempts a solo raid. It definitely ends in failure. Up until now, Hyun Wu has been fighting against a towering dragon. He jumps onto its claw and runs along its arm like Usain Bolt breaking a world record. He follows the arm up to the boss's face where he strikes, trying his best to inflict damage. This angers the dragon, and it releases a wave of fire from its mouth. Our protagonist blocks this fire attack by swinging his sword with force. It creates a powerful gust of wind that protects him. He lands on the ground and looks up, assessing the situation so far. All the spectators continue to leave comments. He has been at it for three hours now, and they are starting to lose hope. Hyun Woo's mana is running out as he blocks the dragon's flames. Mana will be the determining factor in whether he defeats this boss or not. He starts thinking about how he can gather more mana when Tangy jumps on his back and pulls his hair. She is angry because it has been three hours and she wants to go home. She tells him to stop saying that the dragon is almost giving up and everything will soon be over. He knew from the thousands of attacks he had carried out in the past that he was almost reaching his limit. When he said this, the dragon shot up into the sky, leaving the audience who thought it was running away. But our protagonist knew better than that. The dragon hovered in the air for a moment, looking down at its prey and planning its strategy. Its eyes glowed red, and the protagonist knew it was preparing for one final defense. The boss began to fall to the ground like a cannonball. It wasn't what I expected him to do. I'll be honest, it landed right in front of me. Hyunwoo destroyed the landing zone and maintained eye contact. Tangy hid behind his master's back, begging to be sent. It wasn't long before the dragon flew back into the air again. This time, it shot around at a crazy speed. All that could be seen was a beam of light and the destruction of the landscape. Hyunwoo just stood still and looked up, trying to track the dragon's movements. Meanwhile, Tangy kept punching him in the head, yelling at him to do something. Every game has a method of defeating the boss that you start with by reading movement patterns and attacking weak points. But beyond that, everyone has their own unique tactics. This is what makes the game enjoyable. Currently, Hyun Wu is utilizing all of his senses to focus on deciphering the dragon's attack pattern. The creature appears behind him, attempting to launch a sudden attack, its mouth gaping open, ready to devour our protagonist. Its entire mouth roars at the ground where he stands. Debris flies into the air. Hyun Wu sees this coming and leaps high into the air to avoid the attack. He speaks to his pet, Tang, instructing him that they should target the weak spot behind the dragon's neck, and he must use his lightning ability. 
Tangi follows his master's command. He shocks the boss as if he just plugged a fork into an electrical outlet. This temporarily stuns the dragon. Hyun Wu lands on the ground, but prepares himself to jump again. He uses his jumping skills on one of his legs to ascend higher and is thrown sharply from his shoulder. He pours the very small amount of mana he has left into his sword. His teeth clench tightly and his eyes focus. This is it. He won't get another chance like this. He crashes into the dragon right at its weak point, moving so fast and with so much force that it only appears as a bright blue light. Fading cries come from the dragon's mouth as it is defeated. Our protagonist has defeated the mutant desert dragon. He gained experience and many of his statistics were leveled up. He knelt while leaning on his sword stuck in the ground. It only took him a minute to catch his breath. After such a battle, as the adrenaline faded, fatigue began to catch up with him. However, he still forced a small smile despite being out of breath, showing that he was proud of himself. He finally found the strength to stand up. He focused hard for three consecutive hours. After all, Tangy started running towards him, looking happy that it was all over. But the bear kicked him in the face, telling him to turn off the master switch as it threw him off its shoulder earlier. Hyun Wu fell to the ground and realized his streaming chat. He forgot he was streaming while fighting, and the chat was filled with supportive comments calling our protagonist a god and saying he didn't fight like a human. Donations also started flowing in. After this, he lay on the floor just taking it all in. For a moment, Tangy kept shouting while standing on top of him, saying that he wanted to ride on his shoulders. He actually did it after finishing off the boss attack alone and with an impressive time of 3 hours and 36 minutes. Most people can't even do that with a party. He ended the stream and walked back into the desert, happy that all his viewers had fun. He was still tired, though, and needed a good night's rest from it all. She glanced down at her wrist to the shiny new item dropped by the dragon. It was a bracelet containing dragon essence with a skill that allowed her to deal 100 points of fire damage. She decided she would just organize all the items she had obtained. Before taking a break, someone called her name in the distance. She wondered who it was. There was a group of hooded figures. Hyun Wu scratched his head awkwardly, assuming they were fans, feeling bad that they had come all the way to the desert for him. They really shouldn't have let the players know that they were not fans. In front of him was a man with blonde hair and a shield emblem on his shoulder. He said they were all part of the Mono Alliance and had a proposition. The man asked if Hyun Wu wanted to join their alliance. He asked in a somewhat aggressive manner, as if they wouldn't accept a refusal. Hyun Wu hesitated, too tired to fight them all. He had been in the desert all day. He didn't know what he would do if they decided to gang up on him. Staring the blonde man in the eyes, he told him that he did not want to join their alliance and waited to see what would happen next. We are left with a group of players approaching our protagonist in the desert, asking her to join their alliance. Our protagonist Hyun Wu was informed by their alliance that their alliance was called the Mano Alliance. However, Hyun Wu had never heard of them before. This made one of the members angry. They asked how he couldn't know about a guild as big as theirs. Hyun Wu simply pushed past the players, telling them that he didn't care about their Mano guild and wasn't interested in joining. After saying this, the members started surrounding him with weapons. They warned that if he refused to join them, they would just take him out. Hyun Wu's face looked slightly worried as he observed their gear. These people seemed to be around level 110, and he was already tired from fighting dragons earlier. A mysterious man was seen looking down. From above, he had purple hair and was wearing a suit. He jumped down and approached all the players, who didn't really know who he was, out in the desert with a full suit. The man with purple hair introduced himself to our protagonist and the same Mano Guild, saying his name was Yu Junho and he was the caretaker of Nike. Hyun Wu would remember. Kale, the Nike business team manager, mentioned something like this to him. Junho followed around the Nike players and helped them out. When they were surrounded or encountered trouble, his profession was like a babysitter. The alliance became impatient, shouting at the man with purple hair to move. This only made Junho happy because he knew he would. Clapping, he turned around to politely ask the guild to leave. 
He said he would let them all go without harm. Despite their promise not to disturb our protagonist again, it clearly didn't work as the guild shouted vulgar language at the Nike employees. Raising their weapons, they claimed they would only kill the two of them. Juno scratched his head. These people are truly foolish. He tried to help them. He told Hyun Wu to leave this situation to him. The Mono Alliance attacked the nine strong members. Junho stood ready to fight, pulling his weapon out of his pants, and he said it would all end in three minutes. He ran through the first player, as if no one even saw him coming, and sliced through them like Oregon. The party leader was also astonished. Busy looking at his dying comrade, he saw Junho pounce on him. He swung his sword at the blonde player's leg. It caused him to jump back. Tonight's surprise was a serious threat. He gripped the party leader's head because all the other players were left alive. Looking up in surprise, Junho raised his sword. He had heard that the Mano Alliance was quite large and famous. He wondered how sad the other union members must be when they heard that they had lost their captain. They could do nothing but watch with wide open mouths as the purple-haired man prepared to defeat their leader. Hyun Wu could only watch the fight unfold in front of him. When Nike said they would send someone to watch over him, he didn't know they would be this powerful. He could see that this man named Yu Junho was clearly strong. He watched as he ran towards some still living players. Wearing his suit with his sword, he killed them in style. Hyun Wu knows that his level is definitely much higher than his opponent's level. However, he thinks that if they were at the same level, he would be able to defeat him. Junho finishes his slaughter by holding the last player's neck. He apologizes to our protagonist for making him wait. All the defeated bodies lie at his feet, and he is hardly sweating. Hyun Wu comments on his extraordinary skills, which confuses the purple-haired man. He feels embarrassed hearing such praise. Hyun Wu wonders what level he is, and the Nike employee reveals that he is currently at level 170. This surprises our protagonist. He didn't know that rankers did jobs like this. Junho jokes that his level doesn't put food on the table. Also, if he can't earn enough money to buy baby formula, his wife will kick him out of their house. Hyun Woo looks at him as if he is a super brother hero who takes care of his whole family. But he doesn't let that affect his true desire as a gamer. A few days pass and we can see our protagonist walking through the desert with his pet bear, Tangy. He has been working on a mission given to him by the emperor. He visits the Tuma tribe, but it's a waste of time. He has been searching for them for days, but only four goblins have appeared so far. He is not any closer to finding the rebel forces they are currently heading to the next location. Briang Lake hopes they will be luckier there. Tangy is exhausted and seems to be dying from the heat. He asks Hyun Wu why he keeps calling him. If he is not in battle, Hyun Wu states that it is because he wants someone to talk to. This answer does not make Tangy happy and he kicks his face. His master really keeps calling him and makes him suffer for such silly reasons. Hyun Wu admits it is silly, but he is a solo player and sometimes lonely. They both turn to look at footprints in the sand. They wonder who or what could be coming. Then the scene shifts to a city in the real world at midnight and the horizon illuminates the city. Inside one of the buildings is a man talking to someone on the phone. He has a tattoo on his hand and wears a suit with his name. It is Tian Hu, and he is a streamer from China. He has just received the bad news that his sponsor has dropped him and currently instructs him to remove all their ads from his stream. They have decided that the Boss Alley player is more suitable for their company image, and they let him go. This makes the streamer angry, and he throws his phone to the floor. He curses Boss Alley and wonders how he could be considered worse than that noob. Suddenly, the man sitting in the nearby seat overheard. He mentioned the username of our protagonist, and it piqued his interest. His name is Liu She, and he is wearing a white suit with a ring on each finger. He had heard about our famous rookie protagonist, with the username Boss Alley, who managed to win 100 consecutive matches in the Coliseum. Tian Hu informed him that Porsche had just pulled out of their contract negotiations because they wanted to sign a contract with Boss Alley. Instead of Liu She smiled and asked if the streamer wanted his alliance. He was confident they could handle the situation. He began to put on sunglasses, 
saying that the streamer could trust him to handle Boss Alley. It was revealed that Liu She is an executive in the largest guild in the game called the Nine Dragons, Guryong. The scene now shifts back to Hyun Wu, who has been following a trail in the sand, and has reached a giant rock, but the trail leads straight there. He becomes happy when he realizes that it's like an underground prison he found inside a cactus. As he approaches the wall, he receives a notification asking if he wants to enter. He accepts and enters the rebel camp he finally found. It seems they are moving supplies. However, Hyun Wu's search is not over yet, so there is much more to investigate. Suddenly a man shouted at him, asking what he was doing with his cart. Upon seeing our protagonist's pet, Tangy, the man's eyes widened. He thought Hyun Wu was a witch named Adele and that Tangy was a bear named Pepe. These are the names of a black witch and a bone bear, encountered by our protagonist in the first part that he did not want to be found. Hyun Wu just followed along saying that he was Adele and his bear was Pepe. He covered Tangy's mouth to stop him from revealing their identities. The man walked away, saying that he would inform someone named Parian about them. He would be happy to do so. Hearing that they were here, Hyun Wu was delighted that everything was going well. Tangy, on the other hand, was not happy because people kept calling him Pepe. Further inside the rebel base, there is a large wooden tower with someone standing on top of it. It is an elderly man with long blonde hair, and he is speaking with a purple orb stating that the Holy Kingdom will be involved. The blonde man named Parian says that if that happens, they need to expedite their plans and gather all the black witches in the south. The person in the orb is a traitor in the castle. The informant conveys the information they were told, Parian, that there will be an opportunity for him to attack the Lipa castle soon, and they must make preparations. Parian tells him not to worry. They have already gathered hundreds of chimeras and undead. They will not be stopped. While Parian finishes his conversation with the person in the orb, he sees someone sneaking up the stairs beside him. He quickly turns around and shoots magic from his hands towards it. Two purple skulls appear and start searching the area. But there is no one there anymore, and they don't see anything. To gather information about the rebels, he almost got caught. But it was worth it for him to know that the ruler of Lipa Castle is a traitor working with the rebels. He has three days before the attack so he must move quickly to obtain this information. He rushes back through the headquarters as fast as he can, accidentally bumping into someone without noticing, causing a commotion and the man falls, injuring his back. Two other people appear behind our protagonist, coming to see what all the commotion is about. This is bad. The man he knocked down is now standing in front of him. With two people behind him, he is now surrounded and wondering how he will get out of here. As the two individuals approach, we see that they are guards wearing the same red headgear as before, along with armor and swords. They tell Hyun Woo to show his face. Hyun Woo thinks he has no choice but to fight and prepares himself, until a big hand emerges from his head. It's a man. He stumbles. He has red hair and a dwarf-like appearance. He slams our protagonist to the ground and apologizes to the guard, saying he is just his assistant. And he accidentally drops some weapons. He moves the two guards away in annoyance, telling them to keep the noise down. Hyun Wu, still pressing his head to the ground, is confused if this NPC is really helping him. The dwarf stares at him. What he sees is Hyun Wu's sword, and he wonders where he got it from. They head towards the nearest building, and Hyun Wu shows him that it is a dwarf sword he got cheaply at an auction from Sueron in Part 1. The dwarf smiles as he looks at it saying that he is the one who made the sword, and he never thought he would meet someone actually using it. He overflowed with excitement. Hyun Wu quickly realized that these people were not rebels, but kidnapped workers forced to make weapons for them. Hyun Wu felt a new quest here. He told the dwarf that he was an adventurer opposed to the rebels, and he was willing to help him escape. The dwarf was interested in this offer. Escaping didn't sound too bad at all. However, the workers next to him were not very interested, saying that it would be better if they just waited things out as rebels, and promised to let them go. After they finished the weapons, the dwarf called him an idiot for believing the kidnapper's words. They would do anything to trap them here. He slammed his fist on the table. With a smile on his face, he accepted Hyun Wu's offer to escape. 
but he said that he couldn't leave all his weapons behind. Because they were like his children, a new quest emerged for our protagonist, instructing him to escape from the rebel camp with the kidnapped dwarf. Hyun Wu smiled, knowing he would gain more experience and rewards. He told the workers to hand everything over to him. Meanwhile, in several bars in the Yusma Empire, there were two guild members known as the Phoenix Guild. On the left was the deputy guild master, Rachel, and on the right was the guild master, Carrie. Both of them had purple hair and wore purple clothing. They were in the middle of a meeting with Seok Jung and Jung Gu from the New World. The two guilds had agreed to collaborate on the main scenario in the West and were discussing the details. Carrie was slightly hesitant about this, even though the New World Alliance was right in front of them. In terms of the main scenario, she didn't see the point of working together. Seok Jung inserted his finger deep into his nose and started digging around for treasure. He stated that the purpose of collaboration was to widen the gap between them and the other guild. He then flicked a booger right at the Phoenix Guild, saying one more thing he had heard. They were chasing Boss Alley, our protagonist, and he warned them to stay away from him. The booger landed right in front of Carrie, and she couldn't believe it. Her eyes widened in shock. She also seriously asked them if they understood what she could or couldn't say about our protagonist. Carrie didn't know what to do. She wondered if he was trying to start a guild war. With her actions, she didn't know that Boss Alley had connections with the New World Guild. In the end, she agreed, and the two guilds worked together. Seok Jung was slightly surprised that this was not the fight he had expected to start. It seemed that everyone around here was bored with the news from the New World, and the Phoenix Guild caused a stir in the online community of the game. They were at the center of attention because other players expected them to monopolize the main scenario quests. However, the next day a particular video went viral and shook the gaming community. Kang jung Gu approached Seok Jung. Everyone at work wanted to show him this video. The video came from our protagonist who introduced himself to all his viewers. After seeing the large guild trying to monopolize the main scenario, he was worried that many other players would not get the chance to join. So he decided to prepare something to help everyone. And that was by sharing the information he had about the main scenario quest of the New World Guild. Watch this video up close. Boss Alley kept saying that if his viewers wanted to know more, they had to meet him at Lipa Castle in three days. Seok Jung smiled as he watched the video, wondering what our protagonist had planned and why he was revealing such valuable information for free.